Hello everyone and welcome to part 2 of the Roblox VR game tutorial. We're nowhere near a game yet, but we're almost finishing up with our hand tracking. We're going to be getting a bit more of an advanced thing. We're also going to be correcting a thing that I did wrong last episode. And that is, I set up these uh, line orientations and line positions wrong. Uh, we want attachment 0 to be our fizz attach and attachment 1 to be our left hand. And same thing here, attachment 0, fizz attach, attachment 1 right hand. We're going to grab both of these, turn off our reaction forces, and turn on rigidity enabled. And one last thing is we need to make sure that we have network ownership of our hands. Um, we do get sort of replication, but we don't want to fight. So we just want to basically blindly trust the client with wherever the hands are. Is this bad practice? Yes. But we're not worried about bad practice right now. We're just worried about figuring out how these things work, and we can work them into our own good practice later once we know what we're doing. So first of all, we're going to define our character. And we're going to define our player. Game that point. Let's get player from character, character. Um, and then we're just going to do, go through the parts of the character. And we're going to do, if V is a base part, then the set network owner player and that way now we know that all the parts of the player we have perfect network ownership and the server would just kind of accept it which is good because we need that now we're going to hop into our script here and we're going to get started so head scale we're going to do two just for the sake of demonstrations head scale is the scale of the head that's really it um, when you do your standard non-headlocked uh, VR code, it's going to automatically accommodate the head scale in the movement of the headset. But we're going to multiply our height by our head scale anyway, so you can really quickly just kind of have a visual gauge of how tall we are. So, now we have to apply our head scale. So we've got to go on the camera, head scale equals our head scale factor. And additionally, and this one's important, and this is new, vrservice.automaticscaling equals enum.vrscaling.off. Now, why are we doing that? We're doing that because Roblox added some things for setting automatic head scale, which is great because there are so many cool different characters on Roblox. However, we're not doing anything with that right now. We're just kind of playing around with things and kind of figuring out where we're at with things and... So we don't. We just want to make sure that when we set uh, the head scale to two, it stays at two, no matter what. You don't want Roblox interfering. So when I go and hit play, you'll already see that I'm quite tall, but my hands are quite small. And you also notice that these controllers, which are here by the core script, you can disable these, and I will go over that in a little bit. But I kind of need them here for demonstration purposes. You notice that it's there, which that means that's where my physical hand is, but my in-game hand is right here. You also notice that, like, the in-game hand kind of stays about halfway between your physical hand and the VR zero point. And that's because the tracking we get from VR service is not affected by head scale. That's on us to do to our hand tracking. So let's do that. So we're going to go into our VR script here, and we're just going to add in left hand track that position. And we're doing a little bit of math on top of this. Now, we're doing this so we can have, so this position factor is um, this offset, not really offset, it's adjusted based on what our head scale is. So if we're doing head scale 1, this is going to be 1 minus 1, and this whole thing gets zeroed out and it doesn't do anything, which is just what we need. If it's head scale 0 0.5, this little thing is going to turn to negative 0.5 and it's going to subtract half the head scale, or half the, the hand tracking position. And we want that, because when we're half the size, our controllers are going to move, say, a foot in the real world, but we want to move half a foot in game. And additionally, if head scale is 2, this turns to 1. Or if our head scale is 10, this turns to 9. It adds 9 more of that position factor, which is what we want. 
And we'll just do the same here. Right hand track dot position times head scale minus one. So when we go in the game here, we're still tall, and our hands are where our controllers are, which is exactly what we wanted. Yay math. Who'd have thunk it? But our hands are small. And I know quite a few people who don't like having small hands because, you know, if I want to be some big giant floating head, I don't want to deal with the fact that uh, my hands are the size of a normal player. So, we got to do something about that. So we're going to go into uh, our star character, and this is only if your character has bones, because you're going to have to scale the bones yourself, and that's a pain in the butt. So we're just going to make a copy of the hands and put them in... Uh, in sound service because we don't need the bones right now because we're just uh we're just looking at uh that's the wrong thing we want to delete the bones bye bye bones and now if we go in here we do left hand times equals our head scale or if we want left hand dot size we do right hand dot size times equals the head scale and when I hit play lo and behold our hands are the size they should be. They are now twice as big, and I'm able to push over these blocks much easier if I wasn't having tracking problems because I'm down on the floor. And this will work all the way up to 20, 200, whatever, because I know a lot of people want to make the big giant floaty head game, and well, now you can. You just do your little head skill math, and you make sure you scale your hands up, and now you've got uh, you've got your hands. You've got your floaty hands for your floaty hand game. But there's another very important use for this, and something that you're really only able to do in VR, at least do well in VR. And that is, what happens if we set this head scale to 0.5? In fact, what if we put this head scale down to 0.25, right? What happens then? I'm going to do one thing real quick, just to make sure the hands don't... Uh, Interfere with the human report. I'm going to add that to the hand collision group that we made in the last episode. Well, when we get down to 0.25, we're, we're tiny. We're so tiny, in fact, that we are one quarter the height of our character. This massive cube I'm standing on is one stud by one stud by one stud. This impossibly high shelf is five question mark studs? But it's so big. Why would we do such a thing? And that's because when you run your VR games and you're doing a little bit too much than you maybe should for the hardware, it's going to call in that render distance. But it mins out. It mins out at 256 or somewhere in there. I'm pretty sure it's 256, you know, because power of two and whatnot. And it's approximately somewhere between 200 and 300 studs natural testing. So that means that you can have guaranteed rendering within that 256 studs, and by making yourself a quarter of the size and just scaling everything down, you're given back so much space. Yeah, if you're doing all these things and scaling everything down, you are going to run into performance issues, but you're not going to have your critical gameplay things outside of that range. But anyway, now you know how to do your VR hand scaling. Um, I guess next we'll cover picking up and object interaction and that's going to be a lot more technical coding and it's probably going to vary a lot more by game but I'll just kind of go over what I do so maybe you could ideally follow along understand what I'm laying down and apply it yourself in your own kind of special way that's why we do vague things and why the thing I do is really bad practice so that you have the common sense to you know write your own stuff I'll see you next time bye